I know it's only January, but I'm, I had a short attention span. You mentioned NCAA tournament. Do you consider yourself an NCAA tournament team at this point? Based on the net today, but you know that's a fluid thing. But you know, bottom line is, uh, you know that they, they just have a, a big time quality win they're coming off of against Auburn, and they won on the road at Vanderbilt. And you know, I'm just looking at their resume, and they're in the 20s. So, uh, you know, they're a team that, uh, in my mind, the way they're playing, the way they played all year, will be in the tournament at the end of the year. And they've been in that field for quite a while now. If you look at, you know, some of the, you know, projections. You guys are one nine in a row, of course, before Monday night or Tuesday night and things. I just how how did the guys kind of have they responded since since the South Carolina game and and bouncing back, knowing they've got a rivalry game on Saturday? You know, we uh, got back uh, here on campus about one thirty in the morning on uh, Wednesday morning, and so we basically had Wednesday off. That was our off day for this week, and they came back and had a good practice and good focus yesterday, and we spent you know a long day. Uh, shooting, watching film, having to practice, and today obviously will be shorter now uh, as it's you know less than 24 hours before we play because it's a noontime tip-off. Uh, but I thought they responded well, and uh, you know we'll we'll have another hopefully good practice today. Coach, how well do you know Kermit? I know his dad was around a little bit la last year, year before. I can't remember when he was here for a game or something, but. How how would you know Kermit? How long have you known each other? And well, I remember when Kermit was uh, Tim Floyd's assistant way back in the days when they were at Idaho. So uh, I've known Kermit, uh, you know, a little bit since then at that point. And, uh, you know, we uh, have been friendly, especially since I've been here at Mississippi State, because, uh, you know, his dad is a great guy and former player and coach here. And, uh, you know, lives up just close by in Tupelo. And so... Uh, you know, uh, obviously a lot of bulldog ties with their family. Go to Logan, the coaches left. Ole Miss has a lot of the same personnel back this year. In what ways have you seen them change with Kermit, uh, his system that he put in? You know, I think that, uh, you know, all those kids are a year older, a year uh, more mature. I think they've really worked incredibly hard uh, since the new staff and Kermit has arrived. And you can see it in their bodies. I think they've done a good job getting stronger in the offseason, but just a lot of work in the gym. And, uh, you know, um, Schuler's playing extremely well, and uh, he's really been, uh, you know, a kid that from his freshman year to his sophomore year is usually your biggest jump year as a player, and he's definitely made that jump. Uh, he's very good, and they're, they're point guard and leader. And, um, you know, Tyree is, is, you know, an all league player in our league. He's really playing well. And, uh, you know, he was fantastic in their last road win at Vanderbilt with 31. And, you know, he's a, a very good player who can really shoot it with range. And, you, and they're a good shooting team. And you look at their offensive efficiency, they're way up there near the top of the country. They shoot 38% from three. They're one of the top free throw shooting teams in the country at 76%. Uh, you know, they have a good defensive efficiency, so they play both sides of the ball. And then Davis was fantastic the other night, uh, and he's been good all year. I mean, his, his you know, three-point percentage is outstanding uh, on the year. When you look at uh, Davis, he's shooting 42% you know, and uh, higher than that in the conference and is doing a great job rebounding the basketball. He's their leading rebounder. I think he leads them in assists, rebounds, and the second in scoring, so he's having a – a really good year, and their big kid, and uh, yeah, who's really done a great job for him. How do you pronounce his name? Olenichik. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Olenichik. Uh, he, he's a good player. I mean, he's done a lot of nice things for them, setting screens, uh, taking up space, uh, he's scoring around the basket, uh, very good passer. You know, he has a good skill level when you watch him play. He, uh, he really uh, has a lot of things going for him. So, you know, we still have uh, two really good freshmen, too, in Henson, who started every game for him at the four, and then Buffin. You know, that's their four-man. Those two guys split that time for the most part, and they're really, really good players, and they've both stepped up and had huge games. I think Buffin had 14 against Auburn. Henson's been great all year. So, you know, they've got a nice rotation. Go to the back in the cameras. Giving up offensive rebounds was a problem at South Carolina. And then you look at Ole Miss with Olin Echik and Bruce Stevens and some of the other – got some size down low. Has that been one of the major emphasis since you guys got back 
from Columbia? Yeah, we definitely want to block out better than we did down there and get everybody rebounding. Uh, you know, they beat us on the boards uh, in Columbia the other night by seven rebounds, and that was a huge difference in the game. They outboard us by seven offensive boards and then seven for the game total. And uh, so we've got to definitely do a better job at everybody rebounding and doing a better job with our transition defense. Our transition defense was uh, very, very suspect in that game as well. Go back to Logan over here. Only two points off the bench in that South Carolina game. How, how do you get more production out of those guys? You yeah, a lot that, of that? That's my fault, though. I, I think I said that on the you air do. after the game, and I, I, I mentioned that uh, in my post-game comments. Uh, playing time. You know, I need to play Tyson more minutes, and that was a critical error in judgment on my part in that game. And same thing with Robert Woodard. Uh, needs to get more minutes uh, for us, and, and then you know we've got to just be more productive. How much of that do you think? You know, half your half your bench rotation is freshman. How much do you think that was just uh, first game SEC on the road jitters? Uh, you know what I mean. I'm sure there was a little bit of that, but that's over now. Any other questions for Coach? We'll go over back here to Adam. Coach Schaefer remarked about the women's uh, half of the league being having a lot of parity. I think with, with Alabama and Kentucky, obviously Ole Miss and, and, and Auburn, and then LSU flips it and, and beats Alabama. Do, do you see this, a similar kind of parity in this league and, and kind of knocking each other off depending on which team has the best Yeah, I'm telling you, this league, uh, we knew that going in. I mean, top to bottom, I mean, there are no breathers. There is no easy game in the SEC. Every game is going to be an incredibly difficult uh, you know, competitive fight uh, each and every night. Uh, and, uh, yeah, without question, I mean, when you look top to bottom of all the major conferences in the country, uh, I, I just believe strongly that our, ours is the best. You know, 14 teams, and anybody can, can beat you on a given night. And anybody, you can beat anybody on a given night, you know, I, I believe that. Sort of on the topic of parity, probably about a month ago, I don't think anyone – would have had any question who the better team in the state of Mississippi is, but you've seen what Ole Miss has done recently. Saturday's game sort of feels like that, you know, who's the better team in Mississippi. Are you surprised that Ole Miss is as showing is as good as they are this year? I'm really not. Uh, you know, I thought that uh, the talent that was left behind was good talent. I really did. And, uh, you know, we know that. I mean, you know, those, those guys came from a program. They had a tough year last year. Their previous years, uh, they'd won 20 games, I think, four years in a row. So they had a pretty good culture. Andy did a good job there. And, uh, you know, they had the down year a year ago, but I think it really got revitalized. And then, and then they're coming with new enthusiasm and, uh, you know, really a, a, a very good experienced coach like Kermit. I think, uh, you know, they've taken it and really built something that uh, is, is strong. And they've had, you know, they're doing it with those veteran guys with the exception of those two freshmen. You know, all those guys are, are, are good players. and have really uh, worked hard and, you know, you got to credit them for, uh, you know, the, the, how hard they've worked and their talent level and how well they play together. We'll go back to the cameras again. With your experience building a program here at Mississippi State and then seeing what Kermit is doing at Ole Miss, just from your experience, what are some big aspects that go behind building a program, especially like, you know, Ole Miss tying its win total from last year already, you know, this fast start for them, it is, do you, what would you attribute that to? I think building a great culture in the off season and having good enough players that can execute and uh, you know really buy in. I mean, you know, those guys are good. Like, uh, I can tell you, Tyree can play anywhere in the country. Davis can play anywhere in the country. Any program in the country. That's how good I think those guys are. Uh, so they you know they they have some big time players and they're very well coached. Hey, and, think a great, and a good culture. Eric, coming off the loss on on Tuesday, uh, this game Saturday would have been important either way, you know, against an Ole Miss team and a rivalry team. But has the intensity of of this week kind of amped up a little bit coming off of a loss uh, into a rivalry game? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, all the guys on the team know how important this game is. It's coming up, but just it's not just that game. You know, we you know we we slipped up last week, and we're not trying to have that happen again. You know, so our focus is taking up a notch. Go ahead and get it to Tyler here in the front middle. 
We just talked with Coach about what you guys can do to, to get more offensive rebounds and rebounding in general. South Carolina got a few of those on you guys. What can you guys do to be a little more aggressive on the boards? Um, I would say the little things like communication, you know, um, on certain times on defense, you know, and just, just being more aggressive, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's the main thing. Go ahead, Logan. Uh, for either one of you guys, just to, how is this game different uh, as opposed to any of those? Eric, you may be able to speak to it more so having played in it more times than this, but just even in those lean years early on in your career, this was a huge game, big crowd and all that stuff. Just how does it change for the Ole Miss game? Um, it, I wouldn't say it changes our preparation, you know. It might change the the um, the energy that we bring to the game, I guess, you know, just because it's a, it's a rivalry game, you know. But at the end of the day, we're, we're this is – the same journey we've been on, you know, it's it's the same type of team, it's the same atmosphere that we've been in. So it's, you know, we're taking it the, the same way. It, it's no different than, than any other game. Go ahead, Tyler. Uh, for either of you guys again, I asked Coach uh, a couple yeah, minutes ago if uh, he's surprised by how good Ole Miss has been this year. You know, a month ago, I don't think there was any question that people across the country probably thought Mississippi State was the better team in the state. But now you guys sort of have a battle for who gets that title on Saturday. Do you guys prefer it better that way, you know, playing against an Ole Miss team that's, that seems to be pretty good? Go ahead, Abadol. You got this, bro. Go ahead, man. <laughs> got it, bro. <laughs> well, um, um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you like it better when Ole Miss, I mean, they're, I think they're 12-2 and two just like you guys are. Does, does it make it more competitive and – you guys have more motivation to play against an Ole Miss team that does seem to be pretty good. I mean, I, I mean, we, we don't look at records, you know, and stuff like that. It's you know, it's the next game up, you know. Like like I said, we came off a loss that that we feel pretty bad about, you know, and we're on to the next one, and we're, that's what our main focus is. Go ahead and go to the cameras. For both of you guys, but starting with Eric, you know, neither of you guys are Mississippi guys, but maybe what's one thing you remember about this game that maybe brought you right into the rivalry? Um, I would say it's a, it's a lot of, um, I would say we get a lot of support from our fans, you know, for big games like this. And I think it means a lot to them, just like it does to us when, when we come out with a victory uh, in, in the big games like this.